Guess my animals. It, 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 it's green and, and it's a nap, nap, nap. Almost half of all children between the ages of around two, two and a half and seven will go through a phase of sounding as though they might be stammering. And this is something that we call developmental non-fluency and is to be expected when a child is still developing the words and the speech sounds and the ability to put words into sentences that they need to be able to express themselves. And it kind of makes sense. Um, whilst they haven't got all those skills, they will sometimes sound a little bit bumpy. And we prefer that name to stammering because really it's a good description of what they're doing. They'll bump or bounce on the first word of their sentence. So, mummy, 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 can, 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 can I have a biscuit? Or they might have repeated little run-ups to what they want to say. So, mummy, can I, mummy, can I, mummy, mummy, can I, can I have, can I have, can I have a biscuit? Equally, you will get children who have maybe just gone through a real spurt in their language development and they've suddenly got all these new words that they want to use. Why use one when three will do? Um, and yet they are still developing all the skills to keep up with themselves. Um, those are the ones that I like to describe as having a Ferrari brain, but still with a Fiat 500 mouth trying to keep up with it. So why is it that some children go through these phases of being bumpy um, or have bumpy days and then other days when they don't appear to be bumpy at all? I'll try and explain it a little bit more with the aid of my very high-tech balancing scales and um, a little bucket of fizzy fish. So I want you to imagine, if you will, that these scales represent your child. On one side of the scales are all the skills and abilities that your child is learning. So there you've got things like their speech clarity, um, their vocabulary or the words that they're learning and their ability, if they're ready to do that, to put those words into sentences. Um, on that side as well, you've also got things like the confidence that they're developing and the social skills like the turn taking. So those are all their skills. On this side of the scales, you've got the situations and experiences that your child has in their life on a day-to-day -day basis that actually require those skills and abilities to be used. So they are situations that put some demand on the child, that the child uses their skills and abilities to meet. Okay, so let's have an example. A very simple one might be that a child wants to tell mummy something. So that is a demand. You've got something to tell mummy. Luckily, I've got, as the child, I've got the skills to do that. I've got the words I need. I know mummy can understand what I'm saying to her and she's listening and I know that all is good. So I've got those skills. So my scales are balanced. And generally, for the children we're talking about, their speech might seem quite fluent, quite smooth, no bumps. Okay, let's think of another demand. So it might be that, oh, it's a nursery day. Nursery has lots of demands. I'm not just with mummy or dad or family. I'm with a teacher, I'm with lots of other children, I'm having to compete with them to talk. And I've also got to share the toys when I'm there. So that's quite a lot of demand. We'll add a bit more for that. Luckily, again, I've got the skills that I need to meet that demand. I've got quite good talking and I can make myself understood to ner in nursery. My turn-taking skills are improving and I really like my teacher. I'm down with nursery. I'm comfortable there. So again, it's okay. I'm good and my scales are balanced and my talking might usually be quite smooth when I'm there. Okay, let's just imagine that for whatever reason, the demand side gets a little bit heavier. So what could we have? Something like, I want to tell mummy something, but I'm really upset about something that's happened or I'm really excited about something that's happened. So I've got extra urgency and I want to tell her now and quickly. 
that's extra demand and actually the skills that I've got, great though they are, can't quite meet that demand because of all the extra urgency and speed that I'm trying to, to use. So my scales have tipped and that's when I might get that little bit bumpier. Another type of demand might be that, yeah, all is great. I've been at nursery and that's been fine, but now I've got to go to full-time school. Oh my goodness, so much extra demand there. A new teacher, new children, a longer day, which brings about tiredness, which again, oh my goodness, makes a big difference. So suddenly the skills that I've got that were absolutely seeing me through when I was in nursery are that little bit more challenged by all these new demands. And I'm going to be maturing and it's going to be improving, but at this moment, the demand is a little bit greater than I can meet in this new situation. So again, my scales have tipped and that's when you might see your child becoming that little bit bumpier. It might even be as simple as going somewhere new and there being lots of people talking very, very quickly. So I'm going off to grandma's, which I love doing, but there's gonna be my chatty older cousin there and I can't get a word in edgeways because I just can't keep up. And again, my scales are a little bit tipped. With some of the children that we see, they maybe haven't quite got all the skills that they need yet to meet some of their everyday demands. So it might be that they've got slightly delayed speech and language skills. Um, either they haven't quite got all the words that they, they need to develop or they've got lots to say, but they're not completely clear yet. So a lot of people can't quite understand them. And again, because those skills aren't quite enough to meet the everyday demands, those scales are tipped. Typical things that tip are tiredness, excitement, new experiences. And it's a very, very useful way of you looking at your child and looking at what your child's doing every day and having a think about what sorts of things might be for your child tipping their bumpy scales? It's like being a detective, really. And that forms the basis of a lot of what we do in our therapy with the children that appear to be um, moving forward with bumpiness that's lasting longer than we would want it to um, and perhaps needs a little bit more investigation. And we'll be talking about that later this week.